Hello, my name is Anne DeSantis. I'm the director for the St. Raymond Anatis Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith. I want to tell you what's been going on with us since we've been exist in existence in 2015. The Mercedarian Friars came together and decided that they wanted to start a foundation to make outreach to families in crisis. And that's exactly what they did when the St. Raymond Anatis Foundation came into existence as a nonprofit, 501c3, headquartered in Philadelphia. Since that time, I became the director in the beginning of 2018, and we basically have four facets to what we do. We offer prayer, priestly consultations, podcasts and videos, and also programs and events. Now, if you've never been to our website, just to, in to invite you to go to nonatis.org and check out all the great things that we've been doing. Because since that time, since we've been in existence, we've now helped hundreds of families who are going through really challenging times. And as you all know, we went through a really challenging time in 2020. So I'd just like to invite you to go and check out the great things that we're doing. And there's more to come. If you or your church community would like us to come and do some type of an event where we can talk about what we offer in terms of that pastoral accompaniment and making outreach to families in crisis, please do reach out to us. And I'm just so grateful to be able to serve, be able to serve people like you and your families. So again, learn about us at nonatis.org. Thank you. Fiat Ministry Network and Patchwork Heart Ministry present Journeys in Faith. Now, here's Andy Santis. Good evening. Welcome to Journeys in Faith here on Fiat Ministry Network. My name is Andy DeSantis. It's always great to be here with you. And I have an incredible guest for you this evening. He's actually from my own area. I'm from the, the Philadelphia area. So I'm joined by Dr. James Smith, Jr. He is an author, a speaker, and a coach, and he's an expert in the area of authenticity. I just love his story. I'm really excited for all of you to get to know him. So welcome, Dr. Smith. Great to see you again. And thank you. It's an honor and a blessing to be here. So thank you so much for, for asking me to join you. Absolutely. I thought we could start out just like we do on all of my programs is um, telling your story and I know that there's so many facets to that story, but anything you can share about how you got involved in what you're doing now, how it led to, right? It led to what you're involved with and how you're helping people. Absolutely. Uh, to get things started, I come from a very matriarchal family. Women dominated um, and still do actually. And my, my parents divorced when I was 11. So from a role modeling standpoint, I basically look, looked up to my mom and my grandmothers and my aunts, again, very matriarchal family. And it was a family that believed that the family that prays together stays together. So there was a lot of talk about faith and praying and just hanging in there and persevering during challenging times. And my life has been a myriad of, of challenging times, ups and downs, ups and downs, character building, and those character building times and, and thinking about my mother always saying, play the hand that you're dealt, to me meant to be prayerful, have faith, 
and be very ridiculously positive and optimistic about what was in front of you. Well, and that's what God wishes for us, right? He, he does have the best of intentions, wishes, and hopes for us as, as living on this earth. And I really appreciate your sharing that. I know you had shared a little bit with me before about your mother and your grandmother and, and how that yeah. faith was instilled. And it was a very important part of your early life. And you had some things happen uh, that, that led you down that road, right, of this leadership that you're involved in. Oh, yeah. I love for people to know more about that authenticity and how they can integrate that more in their lives. Sure, sure. Uh, <clears throat> watching my mothers and fathers' challenges in their marriage, um, I really focused on, you know, why does this happen? Why do we say we want to spend the rest of our lives with someone and then we don't even want to look at them for five minutes and someone has to take the leadership role to determine what we're going to do about this because it's not working. Um, my mom did that. Tough love, Nancy Smith. I, I attended K through 12 without missing a day of school because of my mother. <laughs> wow, that, that's incredible. Front seat, she always says, when you get into a room, make sure you tilt it because of what you've said or what you've done. So that's that's what I watched. And, and I watched her exhibit, exhibit incredible leadership skills um, during a time in the 70s and 80s where people were saying, you gotta have two, a two income family. A single parent can't raise two boys. Well, she did. And they both graduated with at least a master's degree. So watching her, but also listening to her saying, be true to yourself, be true to yourself. And, and over a period of time, I was. But then I stopped and was around the time where I went to college. And I went from an all black high school where I graduated in the top five to an all white university. And I felt out of place. And I started going along and get along. I even accepted the nickname Jim. Prior to going to college, I was James or Smitty. But my friends and, and teammates immediately called me Jim. So I thought if that was admission into this group of students, I'll be Jim. And Jim stayed through college, first few years of my pro professional career. And while I was struggling with this, I was noticing that a lot of people were saying, I can't wait till the weekend gets here. I don't like my job or same stuff, different day. Um, I'm one way at home and I'm one way at work. I'm like something's not right here. And I fall into that category too. I finally went back to school to work on my doctorate degree, you know, get my doctorate degree. And I decided to study authenticity at work. And I've, I've learned that authenticity is not a matter of either or authentic or inauthentic. It's more or less and situationally, depending on what's happening in your life, will determine whether you decide to be more authentic or less authentic. And we certainly don't want you being your true authentic self if you are a narcissist, if you are cray-cray, if something is wrong, because your behavior has to adhere to the societal corporate mores and norms. But I, I enjoyed studying it to the point where last year after George Floyd was murdered, I said, I have to be all of me going forward to play a role in helping to combat exclusion and, and any of the isms. And I decided I'm gonna do that by going back to my birth name, which was James, hence Dr. James Smith Jr. So from James Smitty to Jim, to Jim Smith, to Dr. James Smith Jr. doing my best to live in love and work in authenticity. Yes, and you've done such a great job with that. I think it's also interesting to note what you were saying about names. You know, even in the Bible, names are so um, important, aren't they? Absolutely. And it's throughout the Absolutely. Old Testament uh, that, that that has happened. And it really means something. It's that connection with who you are in, in the eyes of the Lord, in the eyes of God. So I think that's also beautiful yeah. because you had a, a special relationship with your dad. I'd love for you to tell our audience about that. You know, sure. you were a guest on another podcast with us fairly recently, and you talked about that. But I'd love for this audience to know about that yeah. whole significance Look, of him in your life. You made a powerful point about stepping into your name. People don't 
<clears throat> realize how significant it is and how stronger I feel now that I'm going by James. Well, James Smith Sr., my dad, wow, I, I would describe him as Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. He had a side to him that was very charismatic, funny, creative, the life of every party. He used to love to sing, fly me to the moon. God didn't make little green. Yeah, I know I can't sing, but my dad, singer, extraordinary dancer, taught me everything about sports, everything. And uh, taught me how to ride my bike. And up until I would say six or seven years of age for me, Things were going well. My, I have a little brother who's four years my junior. But then over time, my, my dad developed a bad habit. Um, he worked as a butcher in a cold meat factory freezer, and he started drinking to the point where he told my mother he had to drink to stay warm during the course of the workday. And eventually, led to him being aggressive, uh, there was physical abuse. Um, mom wasn't taking it anymore. So we, we moved out, unbeknownst to my dad, while he was at work and I was at school. I was 11. My brother was seven. And the plan was to move out while he was at work. Not miss school, because we wanted perfect attendance. But leave school early, move out, and hopefully be gone by the time he comes home intoxicated. Well, you know how the universe works. He came home early and he wasn't intoxicated, but he was angry. What's happening? What are you doing? Where's your mother? I, I just pointed. She's upstairs, dad. He turned around, live it. I saw him again when I was 25. I was 14 years. And that was when my grandmother, his mom passed, so I saw him at the funeral. And last time he saw me, I was 11. I saw him again when I was 35. And that was because my daughter, his first grandchild was born. And I looked him up, found him, and took her to see him. And I think he spent more time looking at me than he did his granddaughter. And finally, Anne, four years after that, we finally agreed to have a conversation to talk about the past. Um, where he's been, where I am now as a 39 year old, 39 year old man. And we were gonna hash things out. It was May 9th, Mother's Day, 1999. Getting ready for church, knowing that I was gonna see my father later on that evening for dinner. Get a call from my brother, tells me to sit down. I'm getting ready for church, sit down. What? He indicated that um, dad had a heart attack that morning and died. So we never, we never got closure. However, my way of honoring his memory, him not being in my life for, for such a long period of time, I started using my junior. So I went back to birth given uh, suffix junior. And then last year I went back to James, James Smith Jr. So my father taught me what to do and what not to do uh, relative to, to accountability, faith, perseverance, and not succumbing to life's uh, challenges. I love to hear that story. Now, I have talked to you a few times now, and this is the first time I've heard that aspect of things. So every time we have a, a show or something or discuss, I'm learning some more. And I just want to invite people to learn more about you because there's so much more than even what you're hearing on this show at drjamesmithjr.com because he's available to do something like what we're doing right now, but in person. You know, this show is all about faith and I'm, I'm just so honored to have you here. So if you're watching this and, and thinking, I'd love for him to come to my church or organization or nonprofit, whatever, I mean, he, he would be perfect to talk about all of these topics and how that authenticity makes a difference for you in your life. Now, I'd love you to explain also that May 9th because there's a little more to it than just that. Right. May 9th, Mother's Day, 1999, my father passed away. And May 9th, 2019 is when I received my doctorate degree. So the same day, 20 years later, um, the universe, the universe is funny. My dad 
definitely with me. I, I thought about him. I was talking to him during the course of the ceremony. Like, Dad, we did it. We did it. Well, yeah. And, and, and going back to faith, when I consider what my mom did, uh, going to some of the schools I went to, uh, taking on some of the roles and positions I, I have taken on, um, oftentimes where I like to say I'm, I'm Jackie Robinson, I'm the only person of color in the room. Um, faith has certainly, certainly played a significant role in helping me get up, believe I can do it. Um, all things, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And, and, and those things, those times where I, I thought, wow, I'm really out of my comfort zone, really. I'm reminded that faith and fear can't occupy the same space. So certainly I lean into my faith. That is so true. And that is what our faith is all about, right? It's choosing faith over fear. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so far, this, this show has been awesome just to even for me personally, getting to know you even more and our, for our audience. Uh, we do have to take a short break. So just hang on tight. We'll be back here in just a few minutes here on Journeys in Faith. Welcome back to Journeys in Faith after our commercial break. We're back here again with Dr. James Smith, Jr. And during the first half of the show, he told us a lot about you know, his early life and his faith and what he does in the world of being authentic, being an authentic person. So if you're just tuning in now, make sure you go to drjamesmithjr.com. He's got a beautiful website. So I would love it for you, Dr. Smith, to tell our audience so after you had gotten that doctoral degree, what was your journey like after that point up into what you're doing right now? <laughs> the funny part about it is the next morning after graduation, I felt like I had to read a research article. I had to get on the computer. I had to do something. I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't <laughs> have anything. I would say for the first month, it was just getting back to some semblance of normalcy. Because going on that educational journey to the land of Doctorville, it's, it's, you're basically taking yourself off the earth for three, four, five years, however long it takes. So it took me a while to get reacclimated. But I was on a, a quest to use my newfound scholarly skills with my previous, uh, gosh, my scholarly skills with my practitioner skills and combine the two. And I felt even more equipped to make a difference in the workplace. Um, started writing uh, my next book, which is called The Pursuit of Radical Authenticity, which hopefully will be out this year. Started adding authenticity to the leadership courses I had taken, even adding authenticity to presentation skills, to diversity, equity, and inclusion. How are you showing up? And if you're just showing up to throw up, we don't want you. If you are presenting to impress and not express, we don't want you. And as a leader, you have to create a space for your people to feel empowered and want to be more authentic. Because my research says people who are more authentic at work, it happens because they have great relationships with their leadership. They have a great relationship with the culture and with their, with their peers. So if we are feeling more authentic, we're more inclined to share more of ourselves, which can lead to greater results. But I've learned you don't have to be because we live in, live in such a fake it till you make it society. People go along to get along. 
And in doing that, they oftentimes make stronger relationships where it's not their performance that plays a role in taking them to the top. It's the relationships they have and the more positive vectors they're creating as a result of doing that. I love the way that you're speaking about the professional life and then all of these different facets of, of our lives, right? Because we get up in the morning and we're with either family or spouse or whoever we're with ourselves, but uh, then we go into work and we're in one place and we may be a different person, you know, act as a different person, we're, depending on where we are. Yeah. But like you said, we can carry that authenticity with us wherever we go in a proper way, right? But being who we are and being that well so that other people can benefit from who we are because we're a gift, right? God made us and we're a gift and other people are a gift too. Um, I wondered if you could speak to, there's people watching who are people of faith and thinking they're afraid to uh, exercise who they are as a person of faith and living it out too in this world. Like you had the gra your grandmother and your mother and certain members of your family that taught you, you know what, we believe in God, we believe in Christ, and we're going to live that way. And we're going to teach our kids that too. Um, what would you say to people like that who are sort of afraid to, you're hiding that part of who they are as well? I'll start with the last thing you said about their kids. Uh, we need to understand, believe, or I encourage you to believe that they become who you be, whoever that they is. It could be your team, it could be your children. They become who you be. They're watching you, watching you how you handle situations, how you talk to people, how you communicate. So that's, that's, that's significant. Number two, we have to begin to uncouple fear from uncertainty. Fear, I'm afraid. Uncertainty, I'm not sure what's going to happen. I'm not sure what that's about. We have made them one. Uncouple. Let that fear fuel you. I think some people think fear means F-E-A-R, uh, false evidence appearing real. I believe it means face everything and rise. So rise up. And know that finally your mindset drives everything you do. What you focus on grows. Energy and action follow thought. But if you are focusing on not being big, not having a voice, not believing that you can be more authentic than less, that's what you're going to serve up. That's what life is going to serve up. But if you have that faith and believe that being more of the best version of you is going to lead to greater results, it certainly is. And you are going to be blown away as to how light you not feel, how light you're feeling now, not carrying all the burden of stress, the burden of pandemic, the burden of relationships not working out. You're going to feel lighter and it's going to get easier because when we're young, we do it. And when we're older, we do it. It's that time in the middle where we babysit emotions from 20 to 70. Oh my gosh, you said that so well. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? I mean, it, it really is. It's true. When we're younger and when we're really older, if you speak to people that are over a certain age, was say over 75, 80, 90, whatever, um, that they, they come back to that authentic many times, don't they? <laughs> my, my, my grandmother would say, well, you're putting on weight. <laughs> <laughs> they say, they say and, and, it like and, it is, right? Like they, a child would say, Mr. Smith, you're getting big. But adults will say, hmm, I'm not going to say anything. I don't want to hurt his feelings. You know, who knows what right. he's through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so well said. But you, you mentioned how you feel lighter, too, when you own up to who you are. You look in the mirror. I think looking in the mirror is a good thing. And you look in your eyes and say, you know, am I the person that God made me to be? And, and, and from what I'm hearing from you, that's part of what Beyond Authentic is all about, too. Connect yeah, those, with really who you are and your gifts, your talents, and how it's, you it's can self knowledge mm -hmm. is self knowledge and self regulation. Mm. Yes, and are you adhering to those internal goals, values, and beliefs? Because when you're not, and you're conscious of it, your stomach uh, mm. turns and knots, and you know you shouldn't be doing that. You know you shouldn't be saying that. Come clean. 
Come clean. And don't you think that illnesses too, because people are holding so much back and that sometimes they wind up getting sick or other aspects of their life start to fall apart. Yeah. So and I, I, I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like to be in corporate and have a boss you don't like say, how's it going? Oh, fine, fine, fine. How's it going with you here? Great, great, great. Love this company. And go home and say the opposite. I yeah. know what it's like to go along to get along. I get know. along, go along to get along. That's, that's good because, you know, God calls us out of that. God wants us, you know, there is a right and wrong of this world. And, and I think that God wants us to, don't be afraid to, to, to live the truth, right? Live in him and live close to the mission he's given you. So I just think that's just beautiful. The whole idea of mission, um, you know, on your website, it says live, lead and present authentic, authentically every day. And I know that that's what we're talking about is that whole idea of it's not just something you do nine to five, you know, when you're at work or when you're home at dinner with the family. This is something you're going to take with you each and every day and every moment. It's almost like that relationship with God. You're carrying also your authenticity with you, right? I mean, is that a good way to say it? It's, it's a way of living. It's a way of life. I like to say live what you give. It's a way of life. And once you start living it, just becomes who you are. And mm. when you slip, you know that if we are blessed to get up again, you get a chance to become again. That's why I don't want people to say I'm authentic or inauthentic. You might be in that moment, but we are always becoming. We're always evolving. We're always changing like a kaleidoscope. And as a result, we get opportunities to become every day. A painting, a Persian rug, a piece of jewelry, that's the way it's going to stay in that form. It's the first, it's an authentic, it's a whatever it is. It's, it's the ball that Mike Schmidt hit for number 500, 500 home run. Yes, the ball may age, but in terms of its authenticity, it's staying the same. We evolve, we change. That's why I say it's more or less. And when you say you're authentic, I'll say in that moment you are. Right now you're being, but who's to say how you're going to be in five minutes and 10 minutes? That's right. That's right. You can be somebody different. Um, and, and I think just that idea too, that every single person, there's not going to be one copy of, of another person in this world, right? There's every person has a different gift, a different thing, a different way of giving to other people and even to of themselves and to God, of course, right? I mean, so when you say authentic, I'm also thinking that person is a priceless gem, every single one. And so I think the work that you're doing is you're bringing that out so that everybody can be that, that person. Uh, I wondered if you could talk about the fact of like what you can do for people who are watching. I mentioned churches, nonprofits, organizations. I listened to you talk with the Catholic Foundation of Greater Philadelphia. They have this advisory board, which I'm a part of. And that's how I met you. And I said, like, oh, he is just great. I, I got to have him on our podcast because you were on Sowing Hope and now on the Journeys in Faith with me. Uh, so let's talk about what you've done so far and what you would like to even get involved in, because I know that you really would like to expand that whole idea of getting out there to businesses, nonprofits, churches, you know, communities, just letting them know about and, this. And my initial, my initial business model was B2B, business to business, and me facilitating or providing resources similar to the ones I did in corporate presentation skills, leadership skills, diversity, equity, inclusion, motivation, coaching. Um, over the, and I did it mostly B2B over the course of the years. And a lot now I'm doing B2C, a lot of business to consumer, working with more individual contributors. And I do that by way of one-on-one -on -one coaching, whether it's in person via, or via Zoom, I can go into an organization and watch them present or coach them there. The pandemic has created a hybrid centric uh, spot for my organization. I'm now doing things per in person and virtually. Um, I have a small team, team of five people, and we're able to, again, provide these resources to a group, to a team, to an entire organization, whether it's a, a motivational talk, whether it's speaking to the sales team, whether it's helping the leaders learn how to be better, more engaging 
presenters and helping you get out of your own way. And as we continue to evolve, being able to do it virtually is, is great. And we've traveled around the world, 35 countries, 45 states, and our approach to personal power, our approach to leadership presentation skills and being the possible you works everywhere we go. Oh, that's so well said. I love the idea of getting out of your own way because that's the way you become authentic, really, isn't it? And you use the word yeah. engaging too. Everybody wants to be somewhat engaging with other people. They don't want to be, I don't believe anybody purposely says, I want to be this closed in person that doesn't communicate with others. So I, I just think that's also wonderful. And thank you, really, thank you sincerely for me and also from our network here. We're Fiat Ministry Network on mm -hmm. Facebook. And this is on uh, Facebook Live, and we're, we're just so glad to be here with you this evening. I wondered if you had any, platform. thank you, if you had any final words to our audience. Yeah, I do. Oftentimes in life, we say, why does this keep happening to me? Why does this keep happening to me? Why do I keep getting in relationships like this? Well, I believe that you'll keep getting what you're getting as long as you keep doing what you're doing. Or you'll always get what you've always gotten until you become the person you've never been. What a great time to become the person you've never been. And a great time to keep becoming, keep coming, because you're, you're in charge. If your life was a movie, you're starring in it, you're directing it, you're writing the script, you're handling the drama. Now it's time to handle your life and live and lead out loud every day. Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you so much, sincerely, again. I'd love to have you back on the show because, like I said, every time I talk to you, I'm learning something else, and I know that our audience is too. I also want to invite them to, if you want to learn a little more, there's a podcast on Patchwork Heart Ministry YouTube that you can go to or patchworkheartradio.org and listen to another show with Dr. James Smith Jr. <laughs> right. And thank you so this this was this was great, phenomenal. And yes, I'd love to come back. Thank you, Dr. Smith. So we will see all of you here next next Friday, 8 30 p.m. Eastern. Dr. Smith again, thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless. Journeys of Faith is a production of Fiat Ministry Network and Patchwork Heart Ministry. For more information about Journeys of Faith, email info at fiatministrynetwork.tv. And be sure to friend, follow, and like us on social media. Just search Journeys in Faith with Ann DeSantis.